let's say your professor gave you this problem and uh, you had no idea how to solve it. And uh, you, well, if you had no idea how to solve this problem, the way you start uh, to solve this problem is by looking at it. And when you look at it, you have to read it and you have to identify certain things about it. Uh, the problem says, what is the configuration of the chirality centers in each compound below and provide the example of the specific isomer? Now, if you look at this problem, we have three unique compounds. Uh, in A, we have a, a compound that has uh, fluorines in it. It's a, uh, the unique functional groups. The interesting thing about this compound is that it has two alkyl halides in it, two fluorines. In this B, the one that's uh, what's so unique about this compound in relation to the other two compounds is it has an, uh, an amide functional group in it. In C, C has an amine and an uh, alkyl halide in it. Now, the thing is between A, B, and C, we have to um, uh, take A, B, and C and we have to make three unique isomers of A, B, and C. Now, uh, compound A, they want us to take it and they want us to make the epimer of it. Uh, and specifically, what I mean by that is because uh, when we look at the uh, problem, they say every one of these is going to have a specific isomer that they, they want you to find out for each one of these. Now, of course, we have to find the epimer of A, but also they say that in, the, uh, in the question, they say that they want us to identify all the chiral centers in A. And also, after, after we identify all the chiral centers, uh, of course, they want us to get the specific isomer. Now, for A, they want you to find an epimer, which is a stereoisomer. We'll talk in more detail about this once we do this problem. Uh, B is an, an, uh, is an enantiomer, and an enantiomer is also a stereoisomer. And uh, we're going to be uh, talking more about that in detail once we get into that problem. And C, uh, they want you to find not a, what, not a stereoisomer, like an epimer and, a, and a, an enantiomer, but a constitutional isomer is a structural isomer. And uh, specifically, they want you to find the structural isomer of C. So I think it'll be great for us to first get into the A part of this uh, problem. Of course, our molecule uh, for A looks like this, where we have this, uh, this chain here. We have a fluorine here. We also have a fluorine right there in the molecule. Now, uh, anytime you have the fluorines oriented in this direction, uh, the, this means that uh, this fluorine, whenever it's a solid line, this means the fluorine is coming towards you. It's oriented towards you, which means if it's oriented towards you, the uh, uh, last thing that's connected to this, these carbons right here, and specifically these carbons right here, what's so special about these carbons is these carbons are the chiral carbons. And uh, specifically, if we numbered this compound with the IUPAC rules, and the IUPAC means the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, we start numbering one right there two here, three here, and this will be four here. So this compound will be a four carbon chain compound. And uh, the only thing that's left to do with this compound is for us to identify where that hydrogen is. The hydrogen is right there. There it is right there. And it's dashed. It's going to be the dashed orientation. And also the other hydrogen is going to be right there and it's going to be in the dashed orientation. Now, of course, we, uh, we have done the first step where they want us to identify the uh, Number one, they want, wanted us to identify the chiral carbons. We did that. We identified the chiral carbons. Now, what they want us to do, besides the identif identification of the chiral carbons, they want us to identify the, uh, the, uh, st the uh, absolute configuration of each of the chiral centers, though, if it's, it is the compound R or S. Now, uh, of course, we can do this, and the way we do this is we have to look at each chiral center individually. So let's look at the one at two first. If we took... A, a very close look at number two, what I like to do is I like to say, let's zoom in. Let's zoom in to number two. That's what I like to say. And specifically, when we zoom into number two, we get a shape that looks like uh, this here, this shape here, where uh, you see the hydrogen is still oriented in the back. And on the solid uh, line, you still have, you still have on the solid line, uh, fluorine. And then above it, you have a CH3. And then to the right over here, you have a, uh, what is that? You have a carbon that's connected to a fluorine. It's also connected to a hydrogen, and it's connected to another carbon. And that, that, this carbon right here is carbon number two. That carbon up there is carbon number one. And this carbon right here is carbon number three. And, of course, that carbon is carbon number four, just so you can get a better understanding of what I mean. Now, see, the uh, uh, thing is, we got all, we, we got, now since we zoomed in and we wrote what it looks like now, um, now what we have to do is we have to rank the priorities. And uh, specifically, whenever you rank in priority to figure out if you have an R or S compound, 
you have to rank by atomic number. Now, uh, if we write all the atomic numbers of all these atoms, I think, uh, I know that carbon is going to be six. Well, let's not write the numbers. I know carbon is going to be six. So, um, well, we might as well write it. So that's carbon is going to be six. So this carbon is, has six, uh, 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 has an atomic number of six, six protons. The atomic number is the number of protons. That carbon has six uh, protons also. That not, uh, fluorine has more than six. I know that fluorine is going to have uh, more than six. Whatever it is, it's going to be more than six for the atomic number. And uh, of course, hydrogen is going to have an atomic number of one. And it, it has the smallest atomic number on the periodic table. Now, uh, since we've uh, seen uh, this, since we have a, a decent understanding of what this is now, uh, I can start to rank priorities. Now, since um, this has an atomic, since hydrogen has an atomic number of uh, one, it's going to have the lowest priority of four. Uh, next on the list is the fluorine. Since it has an atomic number higher than carbon, and carbon is, uh, besides hydrogen, uh, carbon is the next highest atomic number in the compound. Since fluorine, since fluorine has a higher atomic number than carbon, it's going to have the uh, priority number of one. Now, the thing is this. Number, the, this carbon and that carbon are the same atom. Since they're the same atom, it's, uh, you can't rank the priority of two atoms that have the same atomic number. So since you can't do that, what you're going to have to do now is that you're going to have to look and uh, see what's connected, what else is connected to the carbon besides, because uh, you, you, the thing is you can't use the carbon to rank the priority here since they're the same, so you have to look at what's connected to the carbon. And if we look at what's connected to the carbon in this example, we can see that that carbon is connected to three hydrogens, and that carbon is connected to a fluorine, a hydrogen, and a carbon. So uh, since this one is connected to a carbon, a hydrogen, and a fluorine versus three hydrogens, this is more important because if you took all the atomic numbers of these three versus those three, this will be higher because that's three ones, and this is like a, a six greater than six and one. So we know that uh, this one here is going to be number two, and that one up there is going to be number three. Now, uh, we got that part. Now, what I like to do, once I rank all the priorities, I like to clean it up. I'm going to clean it up. Now, if I clean this up, uh, uh, once I clean this up, it's going to look like this, where we have a situation where it looks like this with just the numbers. It'll be one will be there, four will be in the back, two will be right there, and three will be right there. And then after we do this, then it's easy because what we do is we number from one to two, from two to three, and from three to one. And specifically, uh, when you're doing this RNS configuration, anytime you have a situation where the arrows are going in the clockwise direction, that's R. Anytime the arrows are going in the opposite direction like this, the counterclockwise direction, that's S. So, but we can see in our carbon right here, or the chiral carbon we're looking at, chiral carbon number two, we can see that this is going in the S direction. We can, we can see that by looking at it. It goes in the S direction, which is uh, going backwards uh, from the clock, which is counterclockwise. So this one right here, this chiral carbon is going to have the S configuration for this carbon right here, carbon number two. So we've done carbon number two. Now we have to do carbon number th uh, three. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to zoom in. We're going to zoom in. If we zoom in, we get this structure here. And then uh, in the middle there, it's going to be the hydrogen. Oops. Uh, okay. So there is the fluorine. Now, uh, there is a CH3 there in this example. And uh, right there is going to be your carbon that's connected to the fluorine the carbon and the hydrogen. So again, we're in the same exact situation as last time, so it's gonna be the same exact priorities. So again, that's gonna be four, that's gonna be one, this is gonna be two here, and that's gonna be three. Now, we're gonna clean it up, let's clean it up. Clean it up. If we cleaned it up, it'll give us this. If we clean it up, it'll give us uh, this compound. It'll be upside down, and you got this, this, this solid line, and connected to the solid line is gonna be a dashed line, and it's going to be a hydrogen. Uh, well, that's right. We're not writing atoms now. We're just writing priorities. So that's going to be number four. That's going to be number one right there on the solid one. That's going to be number two. And on top is going to be number three. So then we go from one to two, from two to three, 
from three to one, and let's write that at marker so it can come up better. So we'll go from one to two, from two to three, from three to one, what is that? That right there is gonna be S. So both of these are gonna be S, the S configuration. So uh, we have finished this problem almost because we only have one more thing to do. And uh, the thing that we have to do now is we have to uh, write, okay, well, we have to write what is the, uh, the epimer of this molecule. And of course, uh, before we can get to the epimer of this molecule, we have to redraw it because this paper is messy now. We'll continue with this problem in the next video.